baby, this is what you came for. Hi, hi beautiful people, I'm Hannah. And I'm Monique. And, and this, this is, is The Fitting Room. Room. Thank you for tuning in to our very first episode. We don't have much for you today. We just wanted to quickly introduce ourselves and talk about our lives and uh, give you an idea of our style. And then we're gonna actually finish the video talking about some of our favorite fashion moments for the month of June. Um, really simple, we are a new YouTube channel out of the great city of Cleveland and uh it's all about fashion so uh we're going to talk about some of the runway collections some of the new trends uh ideas celebrities so if there's anything that you'd like for us to discuss please please like subscribe um follow us on our instagram which i'll drop below and join in on the conversation it's very important right. that we have a healthy fashion deb debate with our followers so let's get started now, Mo, would you like to tell everyone how we met? Yes, so I have to give you this little bit of shade, the tea. So um, I have to give you the background first. Hannah and I, we both worked for BCBG and <laughs> Hannah doesn't want me to tell this story, but I have to. So we both worked for BCBG. Um, I left after being there for two years. And so during that time, Hannah was at BCBG and um, I came back as a manager. So my very first day, um, I'm at work and it's almost towards the end of my shift because she was a closer and I see this girl coming up the escalator and the first thing I notice is this purple romper and nice. I'm like no she had on a purple romper and I'm like oh heck no so then she comes on the floor now mind you I said she's already been there I left and I came back so that means that she knew all of the employees that were there so Hannah extends her hand out and she shakes my hand and she says hi you must be Megan and I'm like no I'm Monique and I'm your manager now she knew that I wasn't Megan because there was a girl there at the time named Megan so um, of course this is like my first day so I leave and my husband is like how was your first day at work and I was like it was good with this girl Hannah oh honey she's gonna be a problem she is shady and as you can see, we love each other. <laughs> it's all love now. Day. It's all love now, but she was a shady <laughs> oak. So, we hit it off instantly. I don't know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. She's making these things mm -hmm. up. But as you can see, we hit it off instantly. And we share similar style, taste. And you'll even see a lot of the same pieces on each mm -hmm. other at different times. Uh, we even style things the same way. So... Um, this next part, we wanted to go pretty fast. We just wanted to do a couple of fast fashion questions just to give you an idea of our personal taste and style. So, Mo, um, I hate this question, but who are your favorite designers right now? Um, oh, that's such a hard question because there's so many good designers out right now. Right. And, you know, you have that aspect where sometimes you might like a certain designer for their shoes. Um, like, I absolutely love Tom Ford. I love him for his shoes. Um, he makes the sexiest heels for women, um, besides Kristen Louboutin. Um, I love Balmain, the classic um, blazers with, like, a twist. I think that's super chic. It's good uh, fitting clothing. Um, a little out of my price range, but <laughs> I still love it. Yeah. Um, I also love fun designers like um, off-white and not necessarily like the trendy like the industrial belts that you see everybody wearing but more of like the runway pieces yeah. and of course I'm a Moschino girl I love um, like the fun t-shirts and like the fun little slogans or um, different companies that they'll incorporate like um, one year they had like a pencil skirt for Campbell so I think that um, those are some of my favorites what about you? Uh... Off the top, I have to start the list off with BCBG. How can I not? Oh, yeah, BCBG. <laughs> Gotta represent the brand. <laughs> but uh, furthermore, I'm just like a big St. Laurent girl. Uh, Off-White is doing amazing things. There's so many amazing designers mm -hmm. right now. I love Laquan Smith. Um, that's really yeah. it. So what are some of the first, like things you gravitate towards when you go shopping? First, first, first things first. Always shoes. Yeah. I don't care Same. what store I'm in. Like, you have to go to the shoe section first. It's so many varieties, so many different styles. But then again, too, it depends on 
what retailer um, I'm in, like if I'm in sex or something and I see like a statement blouse, of course I have to go look at it. So it's not like a set way that I navigate a store, but I do always look in the shoe uh, section. What about you? Uh, shoes, definitely. I love a good mm -hmm. shoe. Uh, shoes then jackets i'll always be in a jacket i am a typical girl i hate showing my arms so there will always be a jacket on me if i don't have on a decent sleeve um and then sunglasses i love yeah sunglasses. oh yeah i forgot about sunglasses what about handbags i like handbags but i gotta be in the mood like i gotta like okay i want this handbag or i'm going handbag mm -hmm. shopping i don't just right. automatically go for it and handbags. i feel like with handbags like it's more of like walking into Louis Vuitton knowing that you're going in there for a handbag. Like certain stores, they might not have a good selection um, of handbags. So I think that shoes, you can never go wrong going uh, with shoes. So, you know, we're, we're doing this fashion blog and I know people are wondering what sparked your interest um, in fashion. Ooh, uh, a lot of television. Um, I knew at a very, very young age, I liked playing in clothes and dressing mm -hmm. up. But I think I just got it from watching too much television. A lot of Sex in the City, yeah, a lot a of Living Single. So it was like a, always a mix of high end and then that urban, funky, fresh vibe. So I would say a lot of television, a lot of magazines. And then um, hanging around my mom so much. Mm -hmm. I was that kid that was right <laughs> up under my mom, playing around her heels. Um, playing in all of her clothes, even stuff I shouldn't be playing around mm -hmm. in. And just like, I don't know, I wanted to be a grown up so bad. So I was <laughs> excited to just finally start picking out my own clothes and buying my own things. What about you? Um, I think for me, it kind of the same thing, like having older sisters, um, definitely my upbringing, like in church, you see some of the most oh, elaborate and extra things in church, like yeah. big, huge hats that block your view um killer suits and just um just like that whole vibe of the black community coming Being together and just like slaying yeah. right like you know on sunday morning you're getting up and you're gonna put on like a nice dress or get a nice pressing curl <laughs> right exactly yeah. um and then another thing too i think fashion was always in the back of my head like it was always something that I gravitated towards but I, for a long time I was more so behind the scenes um, it wasn't until like a lot of my friends in college um, when I was going to Ashland University I was a journalism major and um, there was a girl that was like on her first date so she's like I don't have anything to wear and I'm like I'm sure you have something in your closet so of course went to her dorm room went through her closet and like I helped her pick up something and she's like wow you're really good at this are you a fashion major and that's when it kind of clicked like okay this is what you should be doing so nice. here we are nice so okay let's switch gears a little bit what is your most embarrassing fashion moment oh okay <laughs> so um I don't know if you guys remember the trend of like the leg warmers and heels like you couldn't tell me anything. I had this um, black and white striped turtleneck. Um, and this is when I was literally like 90 pounds soaking wet. So I was a stick. I had this black and white striped turtleneck and I had these matching black and white striped um, leg warmers. And that's when like the Steve Matt and pointy toe pumps were in. So I put the leg warmers over the pumps and I looked like the Hamburglar. It was horrible. And the worst part of all was I had this horrible mushroom cut and I'm just like, I'm slaying, I'm, I'm just doing my thing. And then I had the nerve to put a red patent leather belt in the middle of like the whole ensemble. So I was like the Hamburglar slaying the runway. Like it was oh horrible. Oh gosh. Yeah, that sounds awful. <laughs> What about you? Oh, going back to college once again. I was a sales and marketing major, so they had some stupid dress for success event, and I knew I wasn't appropriately dressed. I didn't care. I was supposed to be a part of it. I told them no, thank you, and somehow, some way, I think someone uh, didn't show up, so they wanted one more person, and they had me stand up in there, knowing good and goddamn well I wasn't professionally dressed, and so. <laughs> They, they did like some crowd participation. They were like, is she business professional? And everyone was like, no. I'm like, <laughs> duh. Thank you for embarrassing me. Like, so yeah, I will never forget that little moment. That's funny. <laughs>
Okay, so I mean, I know we talked about like our styles being similar, but what can the viewers expect to see from you like fashion wise? Like what's your um, style? All right, um, dresses, they're easy, they're quick. So a lot of fun flirty dresses, a lot of um, cool shoes and jackets. I'm gonna keep it simple. I'll try to spice it up for you guys, but it'll probably be a lot of BCBG and a lot of um, jeans. <laughs> What about you? Um, I think for me, especially with accessories, I'm definitely more of like a minimalist or um, I gravitate towards like those classic um, pieces like a dainty bracelet, Tiffany's bracelet, earrings, Chanel brooch, like those classic pieces that when you see it, you know it, but it's not too much. Yeah. Um, I think my style is definitely however I'm feeling. You know how they say get a girl who can do both like i can yeah. do um a pencil dress with you know the, the nice cleavage out and then i can turn around and do like sneakers and yeah. like jeans and like a hoodie and you know look like i'm about to start break dancing but um i think my style is really just classic like i like nice clean lines silhouettes um every now and again you'll probably see like a fun bright color or print because i think um like, if I want to do something, I want to mix it up. That's what I gravitate towards. So. Sounds good. Let's wrap things up and talk about our favorites for the month of June. There were a lot mm -hmm. of dope fashion moments. And I feel like it's only appropriate if we start off with the, the queen, Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And she and her husband recently went on tour, the On the Run 2 tour. And uh, she's always good for a sleigh. What do you feel? Now, let me give this disclaimer. I am not a member of the Bayhive, but I do have to give credit where it's due, and I do definitely, I feel like she slayed like that tour, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Like it made me want to buy a ticket, because <laughs> I didn't, I wasn't spending all that money, but um, I think that she definitely knows how to um, keep her audience's attention not only with her performance but with her wardrobe like you always want to know who she's wearing um she does a lot of custom pieces and you see people they emulate whatever she's doing so she's definitely a fashion icon and that right that she um anything she wears on tour people are like yes i have to have it yeah i think she has definitely set the bar high for the girls as far as the costumes um, I love the Laquan Smith. Uh, I think it's like a custom one piece with mm -hmm. a blazer. It's all white with crystals. It's amazing. She looks amazing in it. And even Jay looks amazing uh, alongside of her in the all white Givenchy. Right. It's just like a dope fashion moment. Even the Gucci on Gucci with the uh, Gucci, what is it, like a parka type yeah, jacket? Yeah, the boots. And the boots, boots are that was like, all right, Dapper Dan, like right. all over. Um, and then I even like the rendition she did with the formation hat. Yeah, it's like all PVC, sexy black. And that was it. I don't know. Like I got my life. I got my edges snatched once again. Um, she always does her thing. So and then um, the video just dropped for Ape Shit off the uh, album from the Carters, mm -hmm. and she's serving looks again. Yeah. The Versace gown, the MCM. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna give the girls a lot. To achieve um, or aspire to this summer with it. Yeah, yes. and not only that, but I think her wearing like the suiting that was a huge trend. And so you know, with her wearing like a suit in the video and um, Jay Z wearing the suit and like the pastel colors, yeah. people are definitely yeah. gonna run out and get a pantsuit. She put Hillary back on with the pantsuit. Uh, <laughs> no, the pantsuit is definitely having a moment. <laughs> suiting in general is just having a moment right yeah. now. Speaking of suiting. Um, we have to put the Men's Spring 2019 collections uh, on blast yes. and pick them up. I love so many shows. Mm -hmm. You had Saint Laurent, you had uh, Alexander McQueen, Alexander oh. McQueen, Isabel Moran, um, what I have down, down here, Sakai. And my favorite was Dior. The Dior show is like yes. my favorite. The Dior show was I am so excited for the things that Kim is gonna do over at Dior. Um, everything felt fresh from the colors mm -hmm. to the little bits of nostalgia with the John Galliano uh, Dior saddlebags and just uh, little bits and pieces just made a uh, made well for a good collection. Right. So, and lastly, Louis Vuitton. Yes, Louis. Ugh. 
awesome. Yeah. The colors, vibrant, um, prints, like, and that's something that you normally probably wouldn't see from Louis Vuitton, like those yeah. ver really <laughs> vibrant prints. I can't even talk, like that's how it makes me collect. <laughs> like those No, it was a really colors. dope collection. Yeah. It was really, really uh, refreshing to see a diverse runway show right, from exactly. the models to the uh, colors. And um, like I said, once again, another uh, fresh, uh, fresh uh, collection as far as the color. Right. Love the suiting. We were just talking oh, about yeah, sure. I love the, uh, my favorites were the, like uh, suit jackets and the shorts and mm -hmm. or the bomber jacket and the shorts. And then I loved his spin on the classic Louis Vuitton accessories for men. Those were amazing. Right. I love the footwear. I think it's going to make for a very, very dope collection. I can see every NBA player, uh, rapper jacket, and, right. and Louis Vuitton jacket or something from this collection. And not only that, but let's talk about the people attending. Like we had yeah. Rihanna slaying the all white. We had Cam in the teal little number. Yeah. That was such a cute dress. Like I absolutely loved it. I would go out and buy it. Like, yeah, that was, was amazing. Super cute. Rihanna actually was like fresh in the first like pieces from that collection. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then you had Naomi, you had Kanye. What did you yeah, think of that moment? Of course. That was a huge that was a huge moment because if you know the backstory um, with Virgil and Kanye and initially um, Kanye wanted that position like we all know that but he was able to set aside like the little shade or pettiness that they had to congratulate him in that moment and not only is that a huge moment for um, Louis Vuitton as a brand because it's something new and it's something fresh but it's huge for the culture a young African-American man um, in such an esteemed position for that particular brand, like that's amazing. Definitely. I almost cried. Yeah. No, I was... love Kanye. I'm rooting for Kanye. I'm rooting for Don C. I'm rooting for Vir Virgil. Rooting for Ivan. Like I've always been a super fan of that whole crew, mm -hmm. and I'm um, very excited to see what they have right. next. I was a bit nervous at first to see um, what Virgil was going to do and somewhat excited because, again, Same. it goes back to that whole For the Culture movement. Um, but I think he nailed it. Yeah, like, I knew it would be so. nothing less than amazing. I just didn't know if it would, if it was going to be more urban or if it was going right. to be right. more traditional. I just didn't know. And it was like a perfect mix of both. Mm -hmm. And we can't get out of here without bigging up Issa Rae. Right. Um, she, what was that, June 5th, June 6th, um, she hosted the CFDA Awards and every single every look designer. was from a black designer. And it was just another way that she uses her platform to right. just big up the culture and you are appreciated. Yeah, so. and that's major because for her, like, she's really in the line like right now. And I'm sure there are a lot of designers that probably want to dress her because of yeah. her platform. But um, she still uses that to uplift um, the black community and make sure that um, light is shed on those people that you probably normally wouldn't hear about. So, oh, yeah. I, I think mean, that's awesome. Baby. Yeah, she worth it. So we're going to pretty much uh, wrap it up here. And uh, thank you for tuning in. We're going to try to get something out to the people at least twice a month. Yep, twice a month. Um, but, you know, this is our first show. I thank you for tuning in. Uh, please, please, please follow us at Fitting Room Talk TV on Instagram. And subscribe and comment and share, share, share. Any and ideas that please. you have?